Continuing our coverage of the ongoing war in Ukraine after two major speeches by two world leaders today, we are joined by journalist Philip Crowther, who is live in Kyiv. Thank you for being with us, Philip. Uh, how was President Biden's speech received by Ukrainians who are actually living in this war zone? Well, look, it's been a momentous few days for Ukrainians, for President Joe Biden, of course, as well, having been here to Kiev on that most improbable journey and that speech in Warsaw also uh, being uh, watched here in Ukraine as well. People watch these things here, be it a speech by President Biden, but also a speech by Vladimir Putin in Moscow. People here are aware of what they're saying. And when Joe Biden says that we will not waver when he talks about U.S. and Western military support for Ukraine. That goes down very well here because there is a knowledge here that there might be a little bit of that popular support for Ukraine and for arming Ukraine going down in the United States uh, and that there might be a little bit of fatigue there. And so this has gone down well with Ukrainians, undoubtedly. Now, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has also responded to uh, these speeches that happened today. Of course, uh, he is enthusiastic about what he heard from U.S. President Biden in Warsaw. He also uh, had a response to Putin's speech in Moscow, and he said he didn't watch it. It sounded like terrorists, he said. And the reason why he wasn't watching it was, well, because there was a deadly Russian missile attack in the city of Kherson in the south that left six civilians dead and 21 injured. That happened right as Vladimir Putin was speaking and saying that he would not be attacking, that Russia would not be attacking cities like Kherson, that Russia, as a reminder, considers Russian right now. And, and Philip, you mentioned that, that speech by Putin today. Uh, he's saying that Russia will be pulling out of that nuclear arms treaty, a treaty which granted the Kremlin may have been violating anyway, but what could this mean for Russia's war on Ukraine? It likely won't have a big effect on the ground. Uh, this is seen as a threat, though, here, uh, when Russia, for example, says that it would be willing to start nuclear tests again if the United States was to do so as well. That is seen as a threat worldwide, of course, but of course directly uh, to Ukraine as well. People here were listening in. They have disdain, of course, for Vladimir Putin, as, of course, does the Ukrainian government. But they were listening in for possible signs of what might be to come. And what they heard from Vladimir Putin was that there was not going to be any let up from the Russian military, that it wanted to expand Russian territory even. This means that the battles will keep going on. Now, maybe... Ukrainians will be somewhat relieved to not have heard any announcement of any new mobilizations of Russian forces inside Russia and also no signs of any imminent large-scale attacks from Russia. There is a little bit of trepidation, a lot of trepidation at times here in Ukraine and here in the capital, Kyiv as well, that there could be a large-scale missile attack coming to coincide uh, with the anniversary of Russia's invasion. There were no signs of any announcement of such a thing from Vladimir Putin today. Yeah, understandable trepidation there. Philip Crowther, live for us in Kyiv, and we thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.